Hello friends, how are you doing? I hope you are enjoying the video lessons for this particular course, Design and Facilitation of E-Learning Courses. I think by this time you have gone through a number of video programs in this course and you can remember that I also presented one lesson on understanding learning and instruction. Can you remember the contents what I presented in my previous video lesson? Yes, I discussed about what is learning, I discussed about the nature of learning, I discussed about learning curves, I discussed uh, what is learning theory and what is instructional design and so on. Friends, while attending the video sessions, you have seen that in number of video programs, the objective is to help you to develop concept in different aspects of learning e-learning, on-learning and there are some video programs which will help you to implement the concept what you are learning through different video lessons. So, my presentations today is on a topic that is scenario based learning. Here we will develop concept first and then very briefly we will discuss how you can use this concept for developing online course. So, friends, uh, today, what I am going to do like the previous video lesson, first I will present the structure of my video lesson. When you see the structure, you see first I am going to tell you what will be the learning outcome, then I will give you a guidance how to attend this particular video lesson, then I will discuss what is learning scenario, I will discuss what is scenario based learning, I will also discuss how you can engage learners with scenario based learning. I will discuss it with an example. I hope that you will like the example and you will enjoy it. There are lots of scenario based learning activities and programs and here for our purposes, I will take only one example. Of course, if the time permits, I will tell you about one or two more. Now, we will discuss the types of scenario, then we will discuss differences in creating traditional scenarios and online scenario based learning activities and lastly, I will tell you about the media elements for e-learners. Then definitely at the end, I will summarize my presentations. Now friends, what will be the learning outcome? That is very important because you know whenever you attend any program, you must know what will be the learning objectives or learning outcome. So, I can say that after attending this video lesson, you will be able to discuss the concept of scenario based learning. You will be able to explain how to engage learners in scenario based learning. You will be able to discuss differences in creating traditional and online scenario based learning activities and you will be able to identify the media elements for e-learners. These are the learning outcomes. Then definitely, I will give you a guidance how to attend these video lessons. While presenting the topic, I will explain the concept and you need to attend to my voice and slides as well. You will see that I have highlighted some portions, some words and sentences with it. So, important words, sentences you will have to attend. I have put some questions in between my presentations. You must attempt to answer those questions at the end of the video lesson. I have also put summary at the end of retention because this is you can see that instructional video. So, when you attend the video, it will help you to learn the concept and it will help to help you to retain what you are learning after going through the video lesson. So, friends first let us take up the point what is learning scenario. Now, no, learning scenario consists of a description of a realistic situation. Here the word realistic situation is very important. It is not an imaginary situation you will have to take a realistic situations, you will have to describe the situations and the situation will be accompanied by one or more questions that ask the learner to respond to some aspects of that situation. So, what is this? First is a realistic situation you will have to take, you will have to put some questions taking some aspects of that particular situation, one or more questions you can put and the learner will respond to that questions and learner will proceed. In this way, we will take the learning scenario for learning. 
Now, learning scenario can be different types. I will discuss in a later, later stage, but now I am talking about two types of scenario. One is simple scenario and one is branching scenario. What is simple scenario? Simple scenario could consist of a only single description. I told you the description of a realistic situation. So, there is a single description of a situation and that situation will followed by one question only. But what is the problem with simple scenario? Simple scenario will not help the learner to go for a pro problem solving activities. It may not facilitate the learners to go deep into the complex situation. So, simple scenario if you consider if you have in mind that you are going to develop some problem solving skills in the learner. So, simple scenario may not be helpful. So, for that you can go for branching scenario. So, now let me tell you what is branching scenario. Branching scenario is developed in stages. There will be one or more questions at each stage. Say for example, when the learner finishes one stage, there will be a question, the learner will answer the question. But in the next stage, learner will get scope to change his decisions or her decisions. Say the early scenes, whatever decisions taken in the early scenes can affect what happened in the next scenes because the learner does not know what is going to happen in the next scene. There will be stages, first stage, second stage, third stage. First stage, one question, one answer. In the second stage, the learner may think that no, actually my answer was not the correct one. So, I want to change the answer. Uh, he, he or she can change the answer. In this way, another stage will come, then he can modify the answer. So, this way they can proceed. Now, branching scenario will help the learners practice skills. This is that is why the branching scenario is very important. There will be a challenge. The learner will be able to challenge their own assumptions. As I told you, there will be stages. In the first stage, if there is a challenge, the learner will provide some choices. Each choices must have some consequences. Say for example, there are three choices. One challenge, three choices. Now, first choice if the learner select, then there will be one consequence. If the learner select the second choice, there will be another consequence. If the learner goes for another choice, there may be another consequence. So, the learner can change in between the choices if he thinks that no, the first choice was not the correct one. So, challenging their own assumptions that is there. Then recovering from the mistakes is another one in case of branching scenario, learner can recover from the mistakes and get it back on track. And third one is that learner can make decisions and carrying through, carrying them through the uh, whole story. So, there are lots of advantages in case of branching scenario if you want to develop practical skills, problem solving skills in learner. So, that is why simple scenario and branching scenario with this scenario will have to decide which kind of problem, which kind of skills or knowledge you are going to develop in learner. So, you can select scenario accordingly. Now, one important goal of using scenario is to make learners work for it that is very important. Now, whenever there is a problem solving scenario, then learner will develop the skills definitely learner will have to work. Without working the learner cannot solve the problem. So, we will have to prepare the scenario realistic scenario such a way that there will be lots of scope for the learner to work for it and solve the problem. So, learners engagement is very important. You know that uh, in distance education and open distance learning always we talk about activities, we talk about learner engagement because the learner, learner learns by doing not by reading only doing. So, the learner engagement is very important. You may set the learner a challenge as I told. So, if you, if you set a challenge and if the learner can solve that problem can achieve a satisfaction because he or she will feel that yes, I have achieved to a particular stage, I have gone to a particular stage. So, it will give him or her immense satisfaction. So, that is very important that is why challenge is very important. Now, after discussing the learning scenario, let us discuss what is scenario based learning. Keeping that in mind, we can say that it is all about placing learners into a situations or context where you will tell the learner a story. 
and the learner will require to make decisions along the way. It is a simple thing. Now, we will have to present the scenario in a story form. Now, you know how to develop a story. Maybe you have developed lots of story in your life. But here, when developing the story, you will have to keep one thing in mind that is uh, dramatic part, the dramatization. If you think about drama, then you see there will be some events and there must be a setup. When you talk about the story, you must say about the setup, in which setup the situation or the, or the events are taking place. Then there will be characters. There may be one character, maybe two, three characters or more than that. And whenever there will be characters, definitely there will be conversations. So, conversations also will take place. We will have to make conversations. And you know that characters are there, conversations are there and the situation is there, realistic situation, definitely there will be some emotions because we are human being, you are dealing with the human being, definitely there will be e emotions, there will be joy, there will be sorrow, there may be frustration, whatever may be and there may be conflicts because through discussions, through, through this process, the learner will learn how to resolve the conflicts and there will be consequences as I told that in one challenge, there may be more than one consequences, one choices, two choices, three choices and one, two, three consequences. So, learner will learn about the challenge, about the choices, about the consequences and they can reach to a resolution. That is problem based learning, problem, problem solve situations. So, definitely they will have to reach a resolution. So, these are the main elements of a story you need to keep in mind. Now, in brief, scenario has three core components what we see that is the description of a situation and including a problem. When you describe a situation, you include a problem in that situation. Then there will be questions with various options and at the end, you take the feedback from the learner about the option selected. There are three options for example, if the learner select the first option, you may ask why you have selected the first option, why not second and third one. So, that feedback is very important. So, this is a process. In this process, using the scenario based learning, learner can learn. Now, scenario based learning for your information was first used in the medical schools in the United States and other countries as a means to train medical students to apply their knowledge into real life situations is started. This is there is a reference Savina and Biden you know that 2007 and uh, so, after that, not only in medical science, in many, many disciplines starting from engineering, science, technology, law, education, even humanities, nursing, any field, any field, the people have started using scenario based learning and uh, lots of research work have been taken place and it has been seen that the scenario based learnings are very, very important for some kind of uh, learning say for example, problem based or skill based learning and other forms of learning. Now, I am coming to an examples for your understanding, how we can engage learners with scenario based learning. Let us discuss it with an example. Now, you know this, this scenario which I am going to discuss allows the training of a training institute, I am taking a training institute as a sample to practice or addressing staff issues that frequently occur in the workplace. The example which I have taken today is a very, very common example in any institute, any organization, it is a regular, regular, regular feature. So, it is a very common, common uh, example I have taken. The trainees are asked to assume the role of the director and assistant director and they confront the staff on a sensitive issue that I will discuss. What is the issue? So, you can tell your learner or trainee to take the role of assistant director and director and one can take the role of a staff also. So, a story you will have to prepare and they will take the role of assistant director, director and staff or trainee or learner and then you will proceed and we will see how the scenario based learning we can use for training. Now, challenge is this particular example what is the challenge? Now, when assistant director goes for a round in the institute, he noticed that a staff, say for example, Mr. Borun, 
is entering into the office around 11.45 a.m. The assistant director heard from other sources that Mr. Barun comes to the office this time almost every day and leaves early. So, this is a challenge to the assistant director because he is the person who has been given responsibility by the director to look after the staff, their discipline and their performance and so on. So, this is a challenge. Is it not a very common thing? Yes, it is very common, but let us see how we can proceed with this example. Now, there are options. You know that learner or the trainee, he or she is playing the role of assistant director. So, what are the options you are keeping in front of that learner as assistant director? There are three options. I told there is a challenge, there are options, choices and there are consequences. Say for example, first one is talk to Mr. Borun. If the assistant director talk to Mr. Borun, if he takes this action, then there will be one consequence. If he make a comment in his personal file without talking to Mr. Borun, say for example, he may think that let us make a comment in his personal file, that will be the permanent one. So, it has another consequence or he may think that he will be punished next time if he is late. So, there are three choices three options. He may not discuss with Mr. Barun, he may think that ok, I will punish him straight forward. So, there are three uh, choices and definitely you can understand there are three consequences for these three actions. But in this particular case, the assistant director decided to talk to Mr. Barun. He has not discussed this problem with him earlier, that is why he thought that it is better to talk to Mr. Barun. Now, keep in mind that the learner is playing the role of the assistant director. So, that is a problem based situation and the learner is learning through scenario based learning how to tackle the situation. So, that is training you can say one kind of training is taking place. Now, come to the role. What is the role? The role is to establish and maintain performance norms and disciplines in the workplace. This is the role because you know the assistant director will have to establish and maintain the performance norms in the institute. Otherwise, what will happen that any other staff can follow Mr. Barun and today one staff, tomorrow another staff. So, all, all the staffs may be late in the office. So, what will happen? There will be no discipline in the workplace, which is a very common thing. But this is important. Now, what will be the goal of the meeting? When he wants to talk to Mr. Barun, what will be the goal of the meeting? You says go through the goal. The goal of the meeting is to confront the issue, that is the issue coming late every day. Now, before it affects the environment, the assistant director will have to talk of this and performance of this staff also may be affected as I told you. So, office environment and performance of this staff may be affected. So, there is a need to meet and there is a need to talk, there is a need to confront the issue because it has become a regular habit. Now, what is the assumption here? In this scenario, the assumption is that the assistant director has already confirmed the situation and behavior that is described. How he has confirmed? He has confirmed from other staff, he has confirmed from other sources and he has come to know that it is a regular practice. Every day he is coming late. So, that is why he is thinking to take that situation, he is thinking about that situation. Let us talk and solve the issue. Now, third thing is leadership what actually we are going to do here through this process the learner is going to take the role of assistant director that means there is a role of leadership also the learner will learn as an instructor you can ask the trainees to play the role of director also and see how they present themselves when leading discussions that will have to observe how the learner is taking that position and what kind of leadership skills the learner is playing or showing that is very important. Now, the approach must be that of a leader. Maybe he is a learner, but he is playing the role of assistant director. So, he will have to play the role of a leader. You need to note whether the trainee convey the leadership skills. So, as an instructor, you will have to take a note that whether the that trainee or the learner, when he is taking the role of assistant director, whether he is playing the role of director properly, whether he is showing the leadership skills, that has to be noted that is the learning purpose. At the end of the scenario, you may ask the trainee to provide feedback. That is a very important feedback we will have to take. 
For example, what is the tone of the voice? What is the tone of the voice? That means when the person is playing the role of assistant director, what tone he has used? What language he has used? That is very important. Was he very harsh or very uh, friendly? What, what language has been used? And what is the level of engagement? Now, while discussing, is it a very short type of engagement or it is a very long discussion? So, what type of engagement? That is also very important. Now, what, whether the person who is playing the role of assistant director is distracted or engaged in the conversation or engaged in the conversation of this stuff, that is also very important. Now, the suggested outline for confronting staffs and workplace by the assistant director. Now, see purpose of the meeting I told you. Now, you should avoid unnecessary conversation. Inform the purpose of the meeting directly. What you can do? Say for example, an example you can go through it. Mr. Borun, I have asked for this meeting to discuss about your attendance in the institute. Straightforward. There is no other introduction. Attendance in the institute. Second, you will have to describe the behavior while you are talking to that particular person. Straightforward you can ask, you are not maintaining the office hours, coming to the institute around 2 hours late and leaving early almost every day. This is against the rules, why did you break the rules? Simple, so describing the behavior. Now, you will have to listen to the reaction, does Mr. Brun confess to this rule violation, whether he is confessing or not, that is very important, you have to take a note of it. Does he offer excuses? What are the information he provides? These things will have to be noted. Now, there may be a denial. What kind of denial? Mr. Borun may say that, no, no, I did not come late. Every day I come in time. So, there may be a denial. Ascendant director will say, I saw you coming late. I have investigated and come to know that it is your regular practice. This meeting is to inform you that it is unacceptable clearly. Now, there may be a diversion also. Mr. Borun may say, sir, Mr. Ramon also comes late. He is never cautioned. So, why I am being cautioned? That is also another important thing because it happens in many a cases. Assistant director says, how tackles the situation? We are here not to talk about others' behavior. We are discussing about your behavior. You need to be disciplined and follow the rules because we are here to discuss about you, not about others. So, there is no diversion. Then Mr. Borun accepts. Mr. Borun says, yeah, I will follow the rules in future. Assistant director thanks, I expect this from you. Next, they agree on resolution. What is the resolution? Set the expectations for the training. What is expectations? Mr. Borun, it is against work rule to come more than 2 hours late in the office. I expect to follow the rules, never come late without valid reasons. If you break the rules, you may be subject to disciplinary action. You can remember that concept, that three choices, there was a disciplinary action, but he has not taken the action now, but he, has dis he is discussing, he has gone for the first choice. Now, he is telling in the resolution that you can agree, otherwise I will take the disciplinary action later on. The focus of the meeting was that, not give punishment, the focus of the meeting was collaborative problem solving, is not it? There was a problem which is affecting the institute environment and the performance of this stuff. So, collaborative way now the people involved they are trying to solve the issues. So, there will be a follow up meeting after that. If the trainee shows improvement in behavior and become disciplined, the assistant director should reinforce his good behavior. This is also very important. How the person is reinforcing the good behavior that you will have to take a note of it. Because if he shows the uh, desirable behavior definitely reinforce in a follow up meeting. If the trainee still comes late in the office after the follow up meeting, it provides opportunity to reassess the agreed improvement strategy with the trainee, then this is another problem. Because the after the resolution the trainee is coming late, assistant director also informed the director then. Director says, I have been informed everything by the assistant director, why are you coming late office? even after reaching an agreement. Then an interesting information comes. Borun says, sir, I visit all the five temples on my way to the office from home and offer prayer to the God. That is why I reach office late every day. Then there is another challenge faced by the director and the assistant director. 
Mr. Bodun is showing an unusual behavior. He has to visit all the five temples, offer prayer, and then comes to the office. So, what to do? Then, after that, there will be a scenario brief questions. At the end of the scenario dialogue, ask the learners following the questions. In this particular scenario, what was the challenge the director and assistant director faced? As an assistant director, what you thought that worked and what not? I like to listen from the assistant director, what was your strategy going into the meeting? How did you plan your meeting? As a trainee, how did you feel? What worked for you? What potential human resource issues you note in this scenario? These are the debrief questions that can be asked to take the feedback. Now, there is a self-assessment questions you can answer. How do you define scenario-based learning? What are the ways to engage the learners in the scenario-based learning? Then very briefly, I will talk about different types of scenario I have discussed already but repeat skill based scenario. In this scenario, the learner is expected to demonstrate the skills and knowledge he has already acquired. Problem based scenario, you have already come to know about it. Here the theoretical knowledge and practical skills both can be investigated. Decision making, logical reasoning and critical analysis is very important in this. There may be issue based scenario. In this type of scenario, learner gets to take a stand on the issues and explore this to understand how this affect decision making. And another one is speculative scenario. In this scenario, learners have to predict the outcome of an event in the future based on the knowledge. Now, very briefly, the differences in creating traditional and online scenario based learning activity. Traditional learning activity, there may be unlimited paths to find a solution to the problem in hand. But in online situations, you will have to be very uh, limited. There may not be unlimited path. You will have to go for limited one. Now, Mary and Blackstone, they told that online situations instructional designer, instructor must design a scenario with a limited number of paths or solutions that the learner is most likely to encounter in a real world situations. Because you know that there are some restrictions in online situations, it is not. So, you cannot go for unlimited path of, but you will have to select only the path which are very realistic. Traditional scenario based learning activity instructor often performs the role of a facilitator and can guide because they are very easy in face to face situations it can help. In online situation the learners will need additional help and guidance because the learner is working alone. So, here you will have to think about self assessment and reflection and the learner will have get opportunity after self assessment and reflection they will revise their answers and they can choose another part. Now, there are various media you can use for elements of learning say text, images, animations, audio video, anything you can use, but you can think the situations must be relevant and authentic. You may present the description of a simple situation, simple text, text with one or more images, audio with images, animations and video. You may present the questions and options textually also. Scenario lastly, I talk about the scenario building tools. You can use PowerPoints using hyperlinks to jump from slide to slide depending upon the learners. Now, let us sum up. A learning scenario consists of a description of a realistic situations we have discussed and it will be accompanied by one or more questions that learner will respond. Scenario based learning, uh, there must be a story and related problems, the decisions the learners will have to provide. After going through the story and listening to the problem, you will have to find out the solutions out of several choices of the options. There are various types of scenario we have discussed, skill based, problem based, issue based, speculative. Traditional learning scenario can be limited paths, but unlimited paths, but in online scenario, the paths will be limited. Scenario could be presented using wide range of media like text, images, animations, audio and video. So, friends very briefly we have discussed about scenario based learning today and uh, you know that there are various designs, various methods and various topics we are going to discuss in our other programs, other video programs. There are lots of topics in this program. So, you must listen to those presentations of different experts also. So, thank you for the time being.